Well, hey guys, Ulta's 21 Days of Beauty event is here yet again. I have gone over the sales and I am gonna share with you my thoughts on some things I think may be worth it. If you aren't familiar with the sale, it happens I think twice a year and basically every single day they unleash a handful of skincare and makeup products that are 50% off. It runs August 27th, so it started yesterday, through September 16th. Anything I recommend is gonna be in the YouTube shopping feature. It's like a little shopping bag in the lower corner of your screen. You just tap on it and the stuff I actually recommend should be there. Starting today, August 28th, First Aid Beauty, their Pure Skin Face Cleanser, five ounces, ordinarily $24. So $12 for a cleanser, not too bad. It's a mild cream to foam cleanser. It has licorice root, which is anti-inflammatory. It's not drying. It's a good option for a second step and a double cleanse. It does a decent job by itself removing sunscreen and some makeup, but if you wear heavy makeup, you may want to use a cleansing balm or cleansing oil first. Uh, it also has allantoin in it, which is very hydrating and moisturizing. Now it does have feverfew extract. If you are allergic to that, you would want to avoid this, but otherwise it is fragrance free. First Aid Beauty, it's changed quite a bit since when I first started on YouTube. They sold to, I think, some big conglomerate. Some of the formulas have changed, but I have tried this recently and it's still just as good and I still recommend it. And I think $12 is not too bad. Bad. Now today as well, you also have Elemis Pro Collagen Night Cream. I wanna talk about this because I do get a lot of questions about this. It is frequently featured across social media, this brand as a whole. I have tried this, you guys, and to cut to the chase, I don't think it's worth it. Is it bad? No, but there are just a lot better options out there. I found this to have a very strong fragrance. Y'all know it's not my preference to have fragrance in skincare. It's a common allergen in skincare products, so I try and avoid it and leave on things things and I really don't like it if the fragrance is headache inducing which I found to be the case with this and at baseline it's a hundred and five dollars even 50% off it's a pass for me now August 30th there is a product that has caught my attention and I am seriously considering buying it I haven't tried it it's the Beekman 1802 midnight milk better aging sleep mask now I've tried quite a few products from Beekman, and I actually have found that everything I've tried has been re really good, frankly. Logical formulations, and the reason this caught my eye is it is a, you know, it's marketed as a sleep mask, which in my opinion is just a buzzy term for PM moisturizer or night moisturizer tend to be thicker in consistency, although there is a lot of variation from product to product. Anyway, this has melatonin in it, which is an ingredient that I have a lot of interest in. I have videos talking about the benefits of melatonin in skincare. Now, when you hear melatonin, probably what comes to mind is it's a sleep hormone. It's what's responsible for helping you transition into going to sleep at night. But when it comes to putting melatonin on your skin, it's not gonna make you fall asleep, but it is an antioxidant, and there's quite a bit of promising research to suggest its benefits for the skin, also for the hair uh, on the scalp for hair loss. This also has bakuchiol in it, which is an antioxidant. A lot of people like to claim that bakuchiol is like a retinol alternative. It's not. In lab-based studies, bakuchiol has been shown to activate some of the same genes that retinol does, and in clinical studies, it has been shown to be beneficial for improving the appearance of wrinkles, but we don't actually have any histologic data to show that it leads to the same outcomes that retinol can, and namely improving collagen production. But it has been shown, at least clinically in small studies, to improve the look of wrinkles. It's an antioxidant. It may actually help in retinol formulations to stabilize the retinol because it's an antioxidant. This product, however, doesn't have retinol, and it doesn't claim to be like a retinol. It just has bacuchiol in there. This also has centella in it, uh, a botanic ingredient that has been shown to be helpful for healing and recovery. It has hyaluronic acid, a humectant that's very hydrating and can help improve the water content of the stratum corneum. Ultimately, that helps your skin turn over more efficiently, allows the enzymes in the top layers of the skin to operate uh, better so that you don't get buildup of dry, dull, rough, coarse skin texture. All the Beekman products, one of their signature ingredients is goat milk, which is a source of lactic acid that can be moisturizing and soften the skin. This also has bifida ferment, which is a ingredient that you'll find in a lot of hydrating toners. It's uh, in theory rich in antioxidants, often very humectant rich, hydrating, soothing. 
And this has palmitoyl tripeptide 38, which is a peptide that is making an appearance in a lot of my recent reviews lately. A lot of the products I have tried have this newer peptide uh, called Matrixyl Synth 6. And it's the one that allegedly is going to boost the production of six different proteins in your skin. But remember, that information comes from in vitro studies, so not on actual people and their skin. Uh, but in people, this peptide has been shown at 2% strength at least to improve the appearance of wrinkles around the eyes. All that to say, I'm pretty interested in this. Like I said, I've never tried it before, but I'm definitely considering buying it August 30th. Now that same day, August 30th, Paracone MD High Potency HA Intensive Hydrating Serum. Now I wanted to talk about this because there's an ingredient in it that um, I ended up going down the rabbit hole exploring this ingredient. I hadn't really heard, you know, I've heard of it, but I haven't really done much uh, up until this point digging in the literature, but I found some interesting info. So the ingredient is called spermidine and it is released from a bacteria. So it's made in the lab. Uh, spermidine is a polyamine and it, it turns out it's an ingredient that there's a lot of research on in terms of an anti-aging benefit, namely for like cardiovascular health. It's been shown to activate a pathway known as autophagy. There's also some evidence that this ingredient may help with barrier recovery. You know, in theory, maybe have an anti-aging effect. It has antioxidant properties as well, so that may help your skin combat oxidative stress. Uh, the research on this ingredient in skincare, however, is pretty limited. This product also has ceramide, niacinamide, and peptides. So it sounds like a hydrating, soothing, Owner that may help with barrier recovery. However, it's $135. That's pretty steep. I will not be buying this, even discounted 50% off of $135. I'm still not going to buy it, but and, and I've not tried it, so I'm not strongly recommending this or anything. I just wanted to bring it to your attention because I think that ingredient is interesting, and I, I will be on the lookout for spermidine and other products down the road. Maybe I can find something that is not quite as pricey with that ingredient in and give it a try for you guys at some point. August 31st, this is a product that I'm not recommending, but I, I thought maybe somebody would be interested and wanna know my thoughts on it. It is the Tula Brightening Treatment Drops Triple Vitamin C Serum. If you're new here, I don't really use them. I mean, I I try them out to review them, but as far as my skincare routine, I'm not really interested in vitamin C serums because ascorbic acid, the form of vitamin C, which has been shown to help with collagen production as well as fading uh, hyperpigmentation, that is a very tricky ingredient to formulate into products correctly so that it remains stable and so that it actually gets into your skin. However, there are vitamin C alternatives, stabilized derivatives of vitamin C that are easier for manufacturers to work with, easier to get into the skin. Now, whether or not they get into the skin and then convert to ascorbic acid to do the things that you may be interested in, that is where there is a big unknown. This product uses 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid. So that's a stable form of vitamin C, but again, it hasn't been shown to improve collagen, but it also has ascorbic acid in it. Now, to what extent the ascorbic acid is stable and is actually gonna work, uh, I'm skeptical. This has citrus peel extract in it as well, which may be a you know more natural source, if you will, of vitamin C, but citrus extracts can be irritating, especially if you already have pre-existing fragrance allergies. There are a lot of compounds in citrus extracts that can cross-react with that sensitivity. Uh, this has sea buckthorn oil in it, which is an emollient that I actually rather enjoy in skincare products. Yeah, my reservations with vitamin C make this a product that I, you know, skeptical about. $58 ordinarily. When it comes to vitamin C serums, you really just never know if they're actually gonna end up working out or doing anything for you. And if anything, they can end up being a lot more irritating. September 5th, a skincare favorite is going to be on sale, the CauseRx Advanced Snail 92 All-in-One Cream. I adore this product. I see results. Uh, this is a product that, for me, works out really well. Not everyone, however, is keen on this product. The texture, the consistency, the concept is off-putting to many people, but I've gotta tell you, anytime I use this product or their Snail Mucin Power Essence, I see a noticeable improvement in skin elasticity, smoothness, and the diminishment of pores. It really is a very good product. So Snail Mucin uh, is hydrating, it has compounds in it, 
that may be helpful for recovery. It's been investigated as an ingredient to help with people who have something called radiation dermatitis, and it shows promise there. It has anti-inflammatory compounds. This particular all-in-one cream also has allantoin in it, which is very soothing. It has dimethicone to help reduce water loss, but not feel heavy or greasy on the skin. It has panthenol and it has hyaluronic acid. These are both very hydrating ingredients and good for the moisture barrier. I adore this product. If you've never tried it, I highly recommend it. And I believe the one in the sale is actually in the tube, which is great because I've always purchased the one in the jar. If you drop the jar, you're screwed because it ends up all over the floor. Uh, it, it's very uh, viscous. If you've never used it, you're in for a treat. <laughs> I love it. This is my favorite and I will purchase it in this sale because it's such a good deal and I do use it. On that same day, a product that caught my attention is the Peach and Lily Wild Dew Treatment Essence. Now, Peach and Lily is a brand that Truthfully, I have never been impressed by any of their any of their products. Their sister brand, Peach Slices, which you can buy in like Walmart, CVS, I prefer those products. I, I find I, I just personally get along better with those, have better success with them. Peach and Lily, their products are not bad, however. You know, they just have never wowed me. This one caught my attention. I've never tried it. I do enjoy it essence. Um, they're typically hydrating. They're typically nice to use before applying maybe an active ingredient, uh, especially if you want to have a little bit better penetration. They just hydrate the skin and in theory help enhance penetration of other things that you may put on the skin afterwards. This particular essence has niacinamide, which I really love. Okay, if you tolerate niacinamide, it has a lot of benefits for the skin. It's anti-inflammatory and antioxidant. It has anti-aging properties. It's good for the moisture barrier. It's good for oily acne prone skin. It may help slow the oxidation of sebum that would otherwise aggravate acne breakouts. It's also anti has anti-redness properties and it also has a uh, benefit for hyperpigmentation. This also has phytic acid, which is a antioxidant and also mildly exfoliating, can help improve skin texture. Saccharomyces ferment, rich in antioxidants, anti-inflammatory compounds, hydrating. Now this has eucalyptus leaf oil in it, which is probably there uh, for preservative effects. Um, you know, it has some antimicrobial properties, but if you are allergic to fragrance, there's a chance that your sensitivities will cross react with eucalyptus leaf oil, so just be aware of that. Like I said though, I've never tried that, so I'm not necessarily recommending it, but the ingredients look interesting and it piqued my interest and I wanted to talk about it. September 8th, Peter Thomas Roth, water drench hyaluronic acid cloud rich, I think it's called barrier moisturizer. This is good, I've used it recommend it. It's just expensive. So it's not one that I ordinarily, you know, encourage you to choose because there are so many moisturizers out there on the market that are pretty good. The reason I like this though is it's a very nice consistency. It's it's rich, uh, richer than their, um, gel, they have a gel moisturizer in this line. It's richer than that. So it's a really nice night cream. It has polyglutamic acid in it, which I love. Polyglutamic acid is hydrating. It improves skin elasticity and it also kind of just almost acts as like a barrier, but it's not heavy or anything of that sword. When I think of polyglutamic acid, I think of netto, uh, fermented soybeans, you know, that slippery stuff. That's what I think of when I think of polyglutamic acid. This also has gluconolactone, a polyhydroxy acid, hydrating, helps to soften and gently exfoliate the skin. And it has lactic acid, an alpha hydroxy acid that can be hydrating and help soften and smooth and gently exfoliate the skin. So this is a great option as a moisturizer if you're someone who has rough skin texture, if you have keratosis pilaris, this is a great option. Uh, it is pricey, I will say that. So it's not one that I ordinarily reach for, but it is objectively good. So it's a great time to try it out. I also wanted to point out this day, um, another Beekman product that I have not tried that caught my attention is their Milkshake Hyaluronic Acid and Squalane Facial Toner. So this is interesting. You know, it's it's a, it's a toner. Uh, it's kind of similar to an essence in that you're putting it on for hydration, may help with subsequent products penetrating better just by hydrating the skin. Uh, not a necessary product by any means, but one you may be interested in. This has mugwort in it, which if you guys recall is an ingredient I really enjoy. It's a botanic derived ingredient that's anti-inflammatory, has antioxidants, may be helpful for barrier recovery. Goat milk as a source of lactic acid, hydrating, moisturizing, and sea buckthorn oil, an emollient that has wonderful antioxidants. Uh, bifida ferment. 
uh, which again is hydrating, rich in antioxidants, soothing. This looks like a promising toner. The other thing uh, toners can be helpful for is as an aftershave. If you're someone who wants a little bit of extra moisture to the skin in the morning before you put your sunscreen on, but you don't wanna mess with a whole moisturizer because sometimes they can be incompatible with sunscreens and then the sunscreen pills and it's just a pain. Um, you know, a hydrating toner or essence, honestly they're they're kind of similar if I'm being frank. A hydrating toner or essence can be beneficial in those situations. So this one caught my interest. All right, September 14th, those of you who love Clinique's Take the Day Off uh, Cleansing Balm Makeup Remover, it is there. $38 ordinarily for 3.8 ounces. You can get it half off. This is one I've tried, I've used, it works well. It's great for taking off water resistant sunscreen, makeup, eye makeup. It doesn't have any fragrance, rinses off easily, it emulsifies well with a little bit of water after you've rubbed it all over your face. I use a mild cleanser after rubbing this all over the face to really ensure I get everything off, but it works quite well. I don't ordinarily buy this because it is pricey and there's so many more affordable alternatives these days. And of course, Korean skincare has been doing the cleansing balm thing for a long time. So right now I'm using the e.l.f. cleansing balm. It does have fragrance, whereas this does not, but that works just as well. I'm fine, I'm typically fine using fragrance in wash off products unless it's just like really strong and annoyingly scented and headache inducing. So I, I, you know, I'm not going to buy the Clinique Take the Day Off bom cleansing balm because that Elf one is it works just as well, or any of the number of Korean ones I have reviewed. Like I really love the Beauty of Joseon one. All right, and then last but not least, this is something I may actually buy and try um, that I haven't. It's the It Bye Bye Under Eye Concealer because not only is it an under eye concealer, which is one of the few things that actually can at least temporarily get rid of dark under eye circles. Obviously not permanently removed them but under eye concealer is you know one of the the more practical things you can do to, to address dark under eye circles on a day-to-day -day basis anyway this has niacinamide which is again an ingredient I love good for redness hyperpigmentation so if you have actual discoloration under the eye that may be beneficial it has magnesium ascorbyl phosphate that is a stable form of vitamin C you know may have a decent uh, opportunity to actually penetrate the skin especially under the delicate eyelid skin it may help as an antioxidant Oxidant, combat oxidative stress that could you know further weaken the barrier but whether or not it's going to get in and boost collagen uh, we don't have much research in that regard this also has petrolatum which is good for reducing water loss and it's waterproof so it'll stay on there uh, which is great in this humidity that we are existing in here right now uh, this is ordinarily $29 so I think I might actually give it a try my only curiosity is like what shade should I go with because they have quite a, an extensive shade range but those of you who have tried it I need you to comment and let me know what your experience with it was because I'm kind of interested in it all right you guys that is it honestly there's not a lot this year in terms of skincare so those are the things I wanted to talk about that are in this sale some of the things I think are worthy of your attention at least you know talking about the ingredients hopefully this was helpful now if you are an Ulta shopper they also carry the ordinary a skincare brand that I use and several of their products I recommend. None of them are in this sale, but they have some new skincare products, which a few weeks ago I reviewed. So if you want to watch that video, it will be on the end slate. But if you guys like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.